Good morning and welcome to Dove Point Bible Study. In uh, today's lecture, we will cover these scriptures on the board. The title of the message is Overcoming Your Burdens, Part 1. Overcoming Your Burdens, Part 1. In Mr. Webster's Dictionary, he defines a burden as something carried, it's, it's a load, something that weighs heavily upon the mind and the heart as responsibility or anxiety. A team of horses that pull heavy loads are called what? Beast of what? Burden. Okay. So a burden is a weight that one carries that's often dwelt upon. It's hard to get rid of it. In part one of this lecture, we are going to define, now listen to this, what the Father calls burdens. Okay, what God calls burdens. Is that what counts? Yeah. What He calls a burden? Okay, that's what we're going to look at. <clears throat> Which, by the way, do not come from Him. I said do not come from Him. Amen. Say amen. God does not put burdens on people. He just doesn't do it. In today's lecture, here's what we're basically we're going to cover. We're going to cover where burdens come from, okay, and how they fall upon a person. And then we'll will look at the reason why you don't want to have anything to do with burdens. Nor do you have to. Amen. No one ever told me this growing up. And, and I lived right next door to my burden most of the time. It changed from seasons in my life to next season to that season. And I never knew I didn't have to have that weight on me. I know now. Thank God. So... And then in our next lecture, we'll get more into learning how to shuck the weight of that burden, okay? We'll cover a little bit of it today. Next week will be all about that, so you don't want to miss that. Our Father has given to every person free will, free choice. When you hear the gospel, you get to decide whether you will accept it or whether you will not, okay? It's up to you. And if you accept our Father and become part of His family, the Scriptures tell us that God will also correct those, all of us in fact, that are His. So you expect correction along the way. <clears throat> when we need it. Amen? Okay. But if you're not part of the family, all right, you can just do whatever you want to do. Is that true? Sure you can. God lets us all choose our own lifestyle. That's fact. At, listen to this. As it should be. As it should be. Even Paul, on the road to Damascus, had a choice. To either receive the Lordship of Christ or not. He didn't have to. Now, of course, we know that Paul did choose to accept his lordship, okay? And in the process, he was what? The first thing happened to him was what? He got corrected by Jesus himself. He even told old Paul, it's pretty hard to kick your old bare foot up against a cactus, ain't it, Paul? It's pretty thorny. That's what he told him. But Paul accepted. And then Paul what? And then... He found his divine purpose and divine destiny, but not until. And I'll just tell you right up front that your burdens in this life, whatever they are, that you allow, I said that you allow, will be the biggest hindrance or hindrances and possibly even make it impossible for you to ever find your destiny and purpose. That's a pretty powerful statement. And when you are aware of your burdens, and that's what I am hoping to do today, I'm hoping to make you aware of what is a burden and how it got there. And when you are once aware of this, then all of a sudden, your burdens... If you're a Christian, become very important to you. Not that you can mother hen over them, but that you realize, I need to get rid of this. 
Does that make sense? In Hebrews chapter 11, go ahead and turn to chapter 12, and you'll be right there by 11. Amen. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. It's called the faith chapter. Some even call it the faith hall of fame, and, and really it is. And it's filled with the names of people who have really worked for God, who have really done a, a, accomplished a lot for Him through faith in His name and in His promises. Okay? I said through faith in His name and His promises. That's how they accomplished a lot. It wasn't that they didn't have challenges. They had plenty of challenges. Okay? And we're talking about people like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, and Samuel. We're talking about the faithful ones of the old days. And the Bible says that all of these people obtained a good report through what? What does it say? Through faith. Say it with me. Through faith. Real simple. I can explain that. They simply believed <laughs> that what God said was theirs was actually theirs. Maybe you're sick today. And God says that you're healed by His stripes. So, are you going to believe the symptoms, or, which are actually real, I mean, you've got them, or are you go, and, and, are, and you're going to let that run its course and cause even worse problems, or are you going to believe the Word of God and use your faith and come against that sickness in the name of Christ and overcome it? What are you going to do? Which way are you going to go? That's what these people did. That's all they had. They didn't have a Bible like we have. Did you know that? Some of these people didn't. We didn't have the Bible till Moses. And then it took a while to get that. Okay? So, they overcame their burdens and their troubles, these ancient ones, say it with me, through faith. One more time. By simply believing that what God said was theirs, was actually really theirs. And all these were faithful witnesses for God that went before us, part of our family. Then in Hebrews chapter 12, look at chapter 12. Believe it or not, the Father includes you and me, get this, in the same company of witnesses. That's pretty heavy company, friend. That's pretty heavy company. But he, Paul's going to tell you that God has included you into that same group. You're not some weakling if you're in Christ. You may not know how to use the power you have. You may not know how to use what he's left you. But that's just a simple matter of instructing yourself through this letter that the Father left us called the Bible. Not what some man said, not this man or any other man, but what the Word of God said. That's why I put it up here. Because this is what he said. I have nothing else to witness to. I got some experience, you know. I've made so many mistakes. I mean, I made them by the thousands, okay? Not, I made them like a machine gun. I made them, man. But I tell you what, if you're going to make mistakes, make them fast and get them over with, okay? And then get on track, right? Why, 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 why take a whole long time making one mistake a, a year, you know, and you only live, you know, for so long? Well, make a whole bunch of them real fast. And get on the train and ride with God. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 12, the Father includes you and I in this group with Enoch and Moses and all these cats. And in <clears throat> chapter 12... God brings this right down to our lives, okay? In our time, in our generation that we live in, as He instructs us how to shape up and to prepare to be His end-time witnesses. 
these ladies and gentlemen earlier were witnesses at really the beginning of the flesh age. We're not that group as far as time goes. We're on the other end of this. How many knows that's true? You can look at the signs and see, yeah, it's, it's closing in. We are end time witnesses. Say this with me. We are end time witnesses for God. That's who you are. Okay? <clears throat> Just like our forefathers were in those early days. And if you're a part of God's family, I can tell you right now, it's either shape up or ship out. Okay? Again, the choice is yours. You had to make a choice to get saved, receive Christ, be born from above. Then once you're in the family, you've got to make another decision. You're either going to shape up or you might as well just ship out. Doesn't mean you're not saved. It does mean you're not going to do anything. Hello? And why, why does God do things this way? Why, why does He do it the way He does it? Because He loves you. And the Bible says in 1 John that God is love, and love does not, 1 Corinthians, does not demand its own way. Love has to be freely given. Else you're robots, and we're not robots. Okay? So on Judgment Day, when some don't make it, whose fault is it going to be? It's not going to be God's. Amen? Why? They made the choices themselves. So you are either a part of God's family, or you took another route. Good luck to you. Bon voyage, and I'm heavy on the bomb. Okay? <laughs> but you know what else? That's as it should be. You should be given a choice. Amen? Amen? This is why I never beg people to get saved. Oh, won't you come? Won't you play another four more curses of just... Courses? Curses? Ha <laughs> ha! Middle slip there. <laughs> of just as I am. I ain't going to beg somebody to get saved. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to present them with the facts from the Word of God. Let the Holy Spirit put the conviction on them and let them make the choice. I grew up in that, oh, would you come up begging people? Not me. It's not the way it's supposed to be. So these mentioned in chapter 12 are those, well, I'm talking chapter 12, I'm talking about us, okay? Are those who choose to go God's way. I mean, have I got anybody like that? So as Paul brings this reality into our time, into our generation, okay, Let's break it down. Let's see if we can understand it. Chapter 12 and verse 1. And I got the cotton mouth already. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Just thank Him right now for His presence. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for that Spirit that I feel right now. The Spirit to heal, to cleanse. To open eyes and ears. Thank you, Father, for that. Glory to God. 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, or because of this, that's what that means, seeing that we, that's all of us, are also what? Compassed about with so great a cloud of what? Witnesses. Uh-oh. That means you're in the same family of all these mentioned in chapter 11. Noah, Moses, and the likes. Then it says this, let us, that's you and me, let us what? Here we go. Lay aside every what? Wait. That's on me. That's on you. You got to lay that aside. Oh, God, take it off of me. Take it. He said, no, lay it aside. You'll see why here in a minute. Okay? And then what else did he say? He said, and the sin which does so easily what? Beset us. Get you off track. Well, what kind of sin is that? I'll tell you right now. It's a sly one. And it's a subtle one because usually this kind of sin is the kind of sin that will put you on an ego trip. 
Oh, things are going good for you. You're not doing anything for God, but it's yours, and you're you're doing good. You're you're making all kinds of money, and you might as well put a bumper sticker on the back of your car that says, "You know what? I really am kind of a big deal." <laughs> you ever met this person? <laughs> sure. Well, be careful with that one. You see, if it was a sin, you know, when robbed a bank, everybody, you're on TV, everybody knows. What a weenie, you know, what a jerk. But when you got this kind of sin, when you got this subtle thing going, making money is not proof of God's blessing on your life. Having plenty and more than enough is part of God's blessing. But just the fact that you can do that does, is not proof itself that you're walking with Him. There's a lot of people, okay, that take God's principles that don't even know Him that make all kinds of money. All you have to do is take God's principles. They work whether you're saved or lost. You understand? So this kind of sin is real subtle. It's really slick, you know. And Satan loves to push this kind of stuff, you know, and then he'll put people around you and say, oh, man, you know what? You really are a big deal. I can see it. And that's designed to make you jealous, but you shouldn't be. Don't go there. Don't go there. Then it says, and let us run with what? Talking about our race now. With what? Patience. The race that is set before us. Now, that means that you have to run your race in life. He's talking about your course in life. With longevity and endurance in mind. This ain't a quarter mile track. This is a long, this is, as the eagle said, in the long run. This is for the long run. Okay? So you have to run your, your race in life with longevity and endurance in mind, pacing yourself. Okay? So that you don't give up halfway around the track of life. There's a lot of that. Okay? But have enough strength and discipline about yourself so that you can stay focused on what? On God's Word. Why? Because everything else is temporal. God's Word is forever. So you go about your normal day of life, you work hard, you still have dreams, you still have goals, you have all that, but you don't take your eye off the Word. And you don't take your eyes off of who you are and why you're really down here. He'll bless you. Don't worry about that. You work hard, He'll bless you. Okay? But the Word's forever. So this race is for keeps that Paul's talking about. Paul continues. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And the word race is agon in the Greek. And it means... A contest. A fight. It can also mean a trial or a test. It means all those. And that's what you have witnesses for is for a trial, right? You, go, you have to go to court and they got charges against you or whatever or, you, or against somebody else and they bring these charges up in a court and there's a, there, there, there's a, a jury over here that's going to hear. Who are they going to hear? They're going to hear the Witnesses. That's what witnesses are for. They're for trials. You understand? And what are they there for? What is a witness there for? To give a testimony. You're going to testify. In this case, it's being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this phrase, let us lay aside. In the Greek, language means to be bowed over under heavy, heavy weight. You ever been there? I've been there. And what Paul is telling you here, he's telling you, get rid of it. Get gone. Get out from under it. Lay it aside. Take inventory of yourself. And the things that are obviously working against you, the trouble in your life, get rid of it. Say bye-bye. 
You don't need trouble and you certainly don't need burdens. Can you say amen? amen. Now you're going to experience probably a little correction through this, but it's not coming from me. You understand? I'm getting corrected too. Okay, It's coming from the Word. Okay? And so with that in mind, I can tell you right now, uh, uh, wisdom through experience tells me that there's no reason not to have joy in your life every single day. Every day. And if you don't have it every day, you need to look inside. Something's out of kilter, just a little. You need to get it clicked back in. And you can have that joy every single day. If whenever trouble comes, you do the Barney Fife, Randy. You nip it, nip it, nip it in the bud. Okay? Why do you want to nip it in the bud? You want to stop it before it has time to take root and grow on you. You need to attack that right up front. Wham! What do you attack it with? Same thing our forefathers did, the Word of God, the truth. That brings what? Faith. Hmm. And what did Paul say about this? He said, you have got to get rid of your sin, and you have got to get rid of your burdens, your weights, that bow you over to the point to where you're not fit to serve Christ. Doesn't mean you don't love Him. Doesn't mean you're not saved. It means he's got, you've got your own self. I'm sure you're getting some help from the devil. He likes to get up there and yak, 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 send little helpers by and throw little darts at you. But the truth is, okay, when you're carrying burdens and you don't follow this, you don't follow these ingredients that Paul has given here, let me tell you something. It'll, you can put yourself into a place where God can't use you. He wants to, but He can't. You cannot get your mind on God when you're all bent over with the weight of your burdens. You can't do it. I've tried it. It doesn't work. And right here is where a person needs to ask themselves, now wait a minute. Uh, who put these burdens there? Who put that weight there? Where did they come from? Those are good questions. And that's what you need to ask yourself. And better yet, why am I putting up with them? That's even a better question. Because you don't have to. And if you didn't know that till today, I'm telling you, you don't have to on the authority of God's Word. Amen? Should be a brand new day for you. Okay? For some of you. And the cold hard truth is, they're your burdens. And why do I say your burdens? Because you are allowing them to weigh you down. I hate to tell you the truth. Not really, I don't hate to. <laughs> and the reason you want to get the sin out, aside from the fact that God, that God hates it, okay, is because sin will get you off course. And you lose focus on where you should be. Okay? Because sin makes you what? Makes you selfish. You know how I know? I know. <laughs> I know from experience. Sin makes you selfish. And the first thing you know, if you leave that alone and you don't deal with it, all you're thinking about is yourself. Instead of what you're supposed to be witnessing to, which is God's Word and His way. And this, again, is wisdom through experience. Talking here. I can tell you this. You will either line up with what Paul is teaching us here, or God won't be able to use you. You're on the shelf for a while. Why? Because you're too busy. Okay? You're too busy with self. You're too tied down. 
You're too tied up with whatever is going on in your life that's a burden to you. And trust me, that burden is a weight that so easily besets us all. We all have to deal with it. How many has to deal with this from time to time? Come on. Everybody in this room is having to deal with this. So you're not alone. You're in pretty good company here. Okay? Everybody has to deal with this. And you know, whenever a person's walking around with that old weight on them, you can see it. It just keeps pressing down on them. And though they may not even realize it, it's crushing them. And they, they don't realize it many times, but other people can see it, they can hear it, they can sense it and feel it, and we're moved with compassion for you. And that's why we're telling you, come out of it. Okay? And yet, some, so many people, now you know, you know people like this, just go along with it. I loved old Brother Shambach with all my heart back in the 70s. Man, I listened to him preach every day, Bill, for 15 minutes. He'd get me so fired up I couldn't see straight. I'll just, yeah, he's a, he was that kind of guy. He'd change your life. Brother Shambach could talk about that old burden people carry, you know. I grew up in a Pentecostal environment. They, they, used to be, they used to wear burdens as badges. Oh, I just got a burden today. I mean, you ever heard this? Oh, I got a burden. It's just to get attention. But I didn't know it wasn't from God. They were telling me it was. I know them old saints. I love them to pieces. Some of them were born in the 1800s. I'm a child of the 50s. I remember this stuff. Wearing the buns and, you know, and the whole nine yards. And I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying this is where it came from. Oh, I got a burden. And Brother Shembar go, oh, it's just a hard old way. How many remember that? It's a hard old way. Life's hard. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, if it's a hard old way, let this old man who's preaching the gospel to you, the good news to you, tell you right now, get rid of it. Don't walk out of here with it. God's word is either true or it's not true. Mm -mm. Cast that weight aside. You don't need it. That's what Paul's telling us. And when we compare our burdens to those listed in chapter 11, mm -mm -mm, compared to them, our little old troubles don't really amount to much. How'd you like to be Noah? You want me to what? How big? <laughs> With a chopping axe? <laughs> okay, Lord. How about would you like to have been Moses and been faced with what that man was faced with? Whoo! But you know, in all of those cases, how did they get rid of their problems? How did they get rid of their burdens? Through faith in God. Say it with me. Through faith in God. And that's another thing, Brother Shambok. He did that broadcast every week. You remember this. He said, you don't have any troubles. All you need is faith in God. Man, I'd be so fired up I couldn't see straight. Woo! But, yeah. And then I'd need it again the next day. You know what I'm saying? Just give me some more. Give me some more. Those old patriarchs and matriarchs, they believed in the promises of God despite the facts on the ground, and it got them through. That's what all those testimonies are about in there. Old and New Testament. Glory to God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, I want you to catch this. God made a promise to every single one of us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And He tells us, He said, I will never allow a burden to come upon you and overtake you that is not common to everybody. Somebody else has already been through this. That's what he's saying. And he says, I will not allow you to be tested over what you can bear. Amen. Now watch this. And I will always, and here's where faith comes in. I will always 
give you a way out. <laughs> That's where the faith comes in. You understand this? I feel you, Father. I praise you right now. I thank you for your word. He made us this promise. And I can tell you right now, He will keep it. God is a man that will not lie. He is faithful to the end. Amen. Amen. Now I can tell you what I've learned down through the years of doing everything wrong in the book that you could possibly do, Bob. I did them all. <laughs> so this is what I learned out of all this, right? I learned about every test and every trial. Every one of them has a beginning. It has a middle. And brothers and sisters, it's going to have an end. And I'm going to tell you something else. God knows exactly when that day is. He knew exactly the day that the patriarchs went into Egypt. He already knew exactly the day, nice on the 14th, 420 years later, that they would be walking out of Egypt. Okay? There was a beginning to the Israelis' bondage. There was a middle to it and there was an end. And when that day came, they walked. And they walked with the wealth of Egypt. And there was not one feeble one and not one sick amongst them. And there were over three million people estimated. Think about that. That's powerful stuff. Whew. And the reason I'm bringing this verse in Corinthians into this lecture is because it has to do with casting aside that weight by simply believing what he said. And without question, God wants you to get rid of that weight because you are his child. You wouldn't want your kid living under it, would you? He don't want his kid living under it. He wants to bless you with whatever it is you need. And He does promise us His blessings, and there are many. And you've got to get rid of that weight, and you've got to get rid of that sin. Now, none of us are, are perfect, okay? And we're always going to have some sin. That's the word talking in First John, not me. I know it's true in my life. And when I do, I've got to repent. There's none of us that's not that way. That's just the way it is in the flesh. So I don't want to blow any smoke here, okay, and tell you uh, now that you're saved, everything ain't going to be perfect because it's not. In fact, you'll probably get attacked more because of who you are. But you can overcome it. And the truth is we all fall short occasionally. But that does not mean, okay, just because we do that, that does not mean you give up. Again, you take inventory. You realize the ground that you have made. This is very important. When, 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 you, when you get knocked down and you get back up, you really need to take inventory and realize, hey, I come a ways that time. I don't go past that mile marker no more. We're looking for a new one. Okay, And then you get up, like the old song says, you dust yourself off and you go again. So it's very, very important that you realize that this great cloud, this great group of witnesses in chapter 11 that you're traveling with, that go all the way back to the book of Genesis, you are a part of that family. And those listening to me, by YouTube or whatever other means you're listening to me, you too are part of that family. You don't need these burdens, and you can get rid of them today also. And therefore, God expects, okay? Mm, 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 mm. He expects you to have the character and the discipline to get this done. Let me give you an example. Okay, For example, in the financial realm, Terry and I, were, we're landlords. We've been landlords for 35 years. We've heard every lie in the book. 
When people get out of their car to come and look at a piece of property and they come carrying their Christian banners, that's code for, we're not going to pay our bills. <laughs> okay? They're carrying their excuse. We're Christians. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay? So, walking in the character and the discipline of God, that does not mean, oh, Lord, I'm late on my rent again. Really? I wonder why that is. I don't know. Could it be you're not careful with your money? How about you bought something you shouldn't have instead of saving the money back for the rent? Hey, the buck stops with you. The buck stops with me. Take responsibility. Yeah, but it's not my fault. How many times have I heard that? And then here comes the violin. And you know what I tell them? Yes, it is your fault. You build up your own trouble. You build up your own resistance. And that's why they're called your burdens. Again, in, in, in our next lecture, I'm going to tell you more about how to shed that weight. But first, you've got to get with the program. And like Paul said, you've got to get rid of that junk if you want to be a witness for Christ. <clears throat> That's just how it is. And you can not demand another person to do anything. It's their own choice. But it is our responsibility as a witness to forewarn them. Okay? Okay, so let's say you get that far. You, 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 you realize and you're casting that burden away and you're, you're using your faith and you're trying not to sin and you do, you get repentance. And then after you put that, that aside, that weight and sin, verse 2, here's what you do. Now, after you've done that, now, verse 2, you're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay? who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Woo! And for what purpose did he sit down in that particular spot? Well, what's on the throne? The mercy seat. And why does he sit there? So that he, listen to me, so that he can shower you with mercy. What's that? Undeserved favor? Unmerited favor? Favors you didn't have coming, but you repented of your sin, and you're, you're, you become responsible for your own self? And guess what? He's sitting on that seat to bring you all kinds of mercy, to help you finish your faith that He initiated, if you will comply with His words. It's not magic dust. It's not a magic wand. It's His words and compliance to them. Verse 3, For consider Him that endured such contradiction of sinners against Himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. In other words, our troubles in this world compared to what Jesus went through at His trial, when He had to witness, but He was so badly beaten at that point, that he couldn't even answer? Said he answered him not a word. Yeah, because he couldn't. I've never been beaten that bad. And then they what? Then they killed him. And he went through all that for us, brothers and sisters. And because he died, okay, he sits on that mercy seat today as your representative before Almighty God to take care of your problems and help you finish your walk when you ask for His help. But do you see how Paul taught this? What's in verse 1 needs to be adhered to before you ever get to verse 2. Laying aside the weight, laying aside the burdens, getting the sin out, inspecting yourself. Then after you get that part done, then you look unto Jesus. The man that started your faith when you got born from above, and the one now who's going to finish it. That make sense? Okay. Jesus said these words in Matthew chapter 11. 
He's the finisher. He's the author. He's the finisher. You made it this, club, this, this far. Now you look unto Jesus. Now you go to Him for help. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This is the man you go to. He said in Matthew 11 verse 28, Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 29. Take my yoke upon you. And watch this. And learn of me. For I am meek and humble in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. 30. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You want to get rid of it? That's the first place you go to, is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He started your faith. Think about this. He started your faith. The day you received Him. And now, He wants to help you finish it. Okay? Not cut you short. Finish it. And so you need to know all this about Jesus because if you are ready to get rid of that heavy load, the first thing you ask for is His help. You got a burden today? Come on, just lift your hands and say, Jesus, I'm casting this care. I'm casting this burden over on you. I can't carry it no more. I don't want it no more. I don't need it no more. I see your word provides that I shouldn't even have it. I take it mentally. I see this load in my mind and I throw it over on you. And I can see that you're more than able to carry it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You need his help. You know what happens then? Then he gives you, listen, then he gives you the strength to handle it. You don't pray that your problems go away. Man, if that worked, listen, <laughs> I'd have got on that train a lot. Listen, I tried to get on that train, okay? You don't pray that your problems magically go away. Like, like Lucky Charms, they're magically gone when you eat them. No, no, no. You pray for God to give you the strength and the power in the name of Jesus to stop them. Verse 4. You have not received unto blood. You know, I'm sorry, you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. In other words, you haven't asked to be crucified. Verse 5. You haven't been asked to be crucified. Christ was. We weren't. Verse 5. And you, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son. So you don't want to forget this. My, sp my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor, nor faint when you're rebuked by Him. Listen. <laughs> God corrects His children just like any good earthly father does. And He does it all the time. Okay? Listen. Here's the experience talking. If, <laughs> if God takes you to the woodshed, just bend over and say, Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> and get your act together. Why? <laughs> You're part of the family. And your father is going to correct you when you need it. And surely you don't think he doesn't know the things you enjoy the most, do you? That will get your attention. When our son John was five years old, he got to where he decided he didn't have to mind his mom. I was going to work. She'd come home and give me a bad report, you know. I talked to him. Didn't work. I had to correct him. I had to correct him. And so, knowing old John like I did, I said, I'm going to give you two choices, son. I am going to correct you. I'm going to punish you. Because I love you. And so I'm going to give you two choices. I, I can either give you a spanking, or no TV for a week. 
He goes, I'll take the spanking. I said, that is precisely why you are not going to get a spanking. No TV for a week. <laughs> and he went, ah! He, I, he thought he was, he thought he was going to die. No cartoons for a week. I got, I got him where it really hurt. Okay? Huh. Our Father is no different. Again, I speak from experience. The first thing He will take from you, trust me, is the thing you enjoy the most. Why? He wants your attention. Oh, why does He want my attention? Because the witness of His Word is that important, especially at this time. And, and He needs you to be where He needs you. Not where you think you ought to be. So He corrects us. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom He receiveth. That means to every son and every daughter, okay, gets taken to the woodshed occasionally because everybody messes up occasionally. Okay? Seven, if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons and daughters. And what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? And the correct way to endure chastening is humbly. Do not get mouthy. You don't even want to go there. Verse eight, but if you without chastisement, but, but if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you're bastards and not sons. You know what that means? Listen to this. If you don't ever get corrected, guess what? You're not part of God's family. <laughs> You're just thinking you are. Now, don't think, don't tell me there ain't a bunch of them out there like that. Because they are. And just so you know, <clears throat> that all this applies to you and me and our generation, skip down to verse 25, and we'll finish this up where it's talking about the second return of Christ, the witnesses at that time. Okay? And what we're going to read is why you don't need any burdens on you, especially at this time, because you'll have all you can handle just following God. Okay? Verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. That means you don't refuse the Father's word, obeying it, or the spoken word of His Spirit in your heart, because it could come either way, okay? For if they escape not who rejected Him that spoke on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from Him that speaks from heaven? Now that's pretty heavy stuff there. Let me explain to you what that says. In other words, if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Yahweh and His voice at Sinai. And they did refuse. How terrible our danger if we refuse to listen to Him when He speaks to us from heaven. Now listen. This is dangerous, dangerous stuff because this is making reference to God's end time witnesses who the Bible says, Mark 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24, it says, who will be led up before Antichrist and his world system to bring a testimony against them. And Jesus said, in that hour, you are not to premeditate what you shall say. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that is what you will speak. For it is not you that speaks, but the Holy Spirit. He will speak through you. And that's why this teaching on laying aside ever weight is that important at this moment, especially in this generation, because it prepares you mentally to stand as that witness when that hour comes. And ladies and gentlemen, read your Bible, that hour rapidly approaches. 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now... He hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Now when he shakes that heaven, you can go over to Revelation, 
And you can see, I've taught all this, it's, it's even online, you can go get it. But when he shakes the heavens also, you know who he's shaking out of there? He's shaking out of there Satan. And the fallen, and the hierarchy fallen angels that are still there, not only that, there's a lid opened in a pit down on the earth, and some of those fallen angels are coming up out of there, so we got them coming up and we got them coming down at this time he's talking about. It's called perilous times. This is the time that we witness in. You understand? So it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth, but only, but also heaven. And God's voice did shake the ground at Sinai. Go over there and read from Exodus 19 through 24. You'll see it. But this second shaking is speaking of the second return of Jesus Christ. Whew. But you know what? As a servant of God, you don't have one thing to worry about. Why? Because He's not angry with you. Okay? God's wrath is going to fall on His enemies, not His family. Verse 27. Almost done. Have you enjoyed it so far? And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Remain. I'm going to tell you something. This, this verse here signals the end of the flesh age. This is referring to the same place that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, at a moment, at a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump of God, and all souls are changed. From what to what? From flesh to spirit. It's a big deal. It's the first resurrection. This means that God, when He shakes this thing, and He's going to shake it, okay, will sift out everything without solid foundations. Everything. So that only the unshakable things will be left. I don't know. How easy are you shook? Think about it. How easily are you shaken? If you're anchored in Him, guess what? You can't be shaken. I said you can't be. It's impossible. God's already said it right here. How solid is your mind? How solid is your faith that His Word is true? Those are the questions Christians everywhere need to be asking themselves right now. Do you listen to men? Which is okay. If they're teaching what the Father said, but a lot of them, you know, get off track. Or do you listen to what Yahweh said? Man, you're safe there. Oh, you can't miss here. You can't miss. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. God's Word. And I'm a prophecy teacher. I love it. I'm not teaching it right a little bit here, but I would rather teach prophecy than anything else. But you know what? I have to teach week by week what the Spirit leads me to teach. So this is why I'm here right now. This should tell you something from the Father. He's all over me to teach these kind of things right now. Can you sense something's about to happen? I can God's Word tells you exactly. If you're afraid of the unknown, that's the thing most people fear is what they don't know. God's Word tells you exactly how all this is coming down. Oh, the earth's only got 12 years left. I saw that on the news. I said, wow, God didn't say that. <laughs> this chick said that. All these little mice are following her around. 
I'm going to deal with that too, by the way. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring to you a message you ain't never heard before about the earth and what God said about it and what's going to happen. And it ain't what they're telling you on the tube. Glory to God. God will tell you exactly how it's all coming down. Why does He do that? So that you will know that you are where you should be and you are doing what you should be doing. That's why. Otherwise, friend, you're going to get shaken off. And that's the truth. You are going to... You are going to get shaken off if you do not adhere to Father's Word when this hour comes, and it is coming. Again, it's your choice. I mean, He leaves it open to us, right? Verse 28, one more verse. Two more verses, I'm sorry. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, that's the favor of God, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. That's why you want to get rid of those burdens. That's why uh, you want to cast off that weight. Verse 29 to finish. For God is a consuming fire. To you, He is the Holy Spirit, and His fire touches and warms your heart and your mind and your soul, but to the devil and his crowd, it's a deadly fire, and the Bible calls it the lake of fire, and they're all going to take a swim. God spoke, and nothing became everything. He's going to speak again as the consuming fire, and some things are going to become ashes. That's in your Bible. So what a time to be a witness, eh? To quote my Canadian friends, eh? Right? What a time to live, eh? Now, in the next lecture, I'll show you how to shuck off that weight even more. I just showed you one thing today, but I'll show you a whole bunch of them next time. And how to get rid of those burdens, so don't miss that next lecture. I hope you have enjoyed this, and I hope you learned at least one thing today, maybe a couple. If you did, I, 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 then I feel good about that, okay? So, this lecture will be uh, on our website, dovepoint.com, uh, sometime late tonight, early in the morning, and it'll be on YouTube sometime late tonight or early in the morning, so you can... Watch it as well as listen to it. So I would do that this week. I might listen to it a couple of times. You know, there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay? So till next time, tell a friend to watch us or come in. Till next time, shalom and shalom. I love you all.